Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to the bustling Amsterdam Central Station here in the Netherlands. Today I'm going to be doing something which I've wanted to do for so long since the service started. I'm taking the new night jet service from here in Amsterdam all the way to Vienna. Over 14 hours in a deluxe sleeper. Come with me and we'll check it out. Enjoy the trip. Over the last five years, sleeper trains in Europe have enjoyed a massive renaissance, and a lot of it is down to these guys, Nightjet. This is the Austrian Railway's answer to solving the accommodation and transport problem in one fell swoop, and something I've used lots of times to get around the continent, getting to major cities in the morning ready to start the day. Over the last few years, Nightjet's tentacles have extended all over Europe, linking 25 major cities with each other using comfortable modern sleeping cars. Today, I'm checking out the Amsterdam to Vienna route, which started service during the pandemic in 2021. Amsterdam Central is one of Europe's great inspirational railway terminals. And what's super exciting these days is you can now get from London to Vienna in luxury by train in less than 24 hours. I arrived at lunchtime and dropped my bags here, went into the city centre and came back shortly before departure. Before we dive into the journey though, let's talk tickets. You'll almost certainly be booking this trip online and there are several different types of accommodation on the night jet. The website is mostly straightforward, but be sure you click to search one way and day tickets. That seat option is only for people with passes who need a reservation. Every fare is comprised of your basic ticket for travel. This one here is a saver ticket, no refunds or changes. And as you see, it's lots cheaper than the flexible ticket. So let's pick that. Then we choose our accommodation. I don't recommend the seats, which come with no extra charge, unless you're desperate. This is a 14-hour overnight train and the couchettes are where you start to find some value. You'll share with passengers of the same sex and there's very basic bedding provided. Select either a 6 or a 4 berth depending on how much personal space you think you're going to need. Finally, here are the proper sleepers and this is where it can get a bit confusing. If you're on your own, pick a one bed sleeper. This means you have solo occupancy like I do and only the deluxe sleepers have a private shower, which is why they're a bit more expensive. All in all, 229 euro is an expensive train ticket, but we are saving on a city centre hotel and the price of a plane ticket, as well as getting into Vienna before 10am with no nasty early alarm call and not to mention the cost of getting to and from airports and the dreaded long security lines and all the other faffing about that taking flights lumbers you with. There are two important things to note about the fares though. One, if you're traveling outside Austria, you need to print your ticket as a PDF, which is kind of cumbersome. And secondly, all tickets, even my deluxe sleeper, are second class, so there's no lounge access available if you're in Amsterdam. We'll join today's trip at about 7pm as I wait for the sleeper to arrive from the sidings. Okay, so this is super handy. Our train to Vienna and Innsbruck is actually two trains. You can see the rear portion of the train, the rear five carriages are all 28 something cars, 280, 281, 282 to 284. And the portion to Vienna is the 25 cars, which are actually towards the front of the train. These letters up here, uh, NOPQ, these refer to the place on the platform that you should stand for those particular cars. Pretty handy. All right, it's about 10 past seven and the train is due in any moment now. A couple of bits of admin that we need to do before we get on board the train. Firstly, let's get our tickets ready. It's only valid with ID, so you need to have a passport out too. 
and secondly we're going to Austria and this surgical mask ain't good enough I need to wear one of these FFP2 masks these are the only type of mask you're allowed to wear on public transport in Austria all right we're ready to go to Austria it's the night jet deluxe sleeper here it comes Our night jet arrives with seated cars or Sitzwagen, couchette cars or Liegewagen, and the sleeper cars, the Schlafwagen, all in tow. Well, it is not as busy as I thought it was going to be here. It is car 252, that's us. Hello. Okay, we are in 42, 42. Finding my berth is pretty easy. Well, this is the first time I've been on a night jet where it's been set up in day mode when I've boarded. It's uh, not even half past seven yet, so this kind of makes sense because I do want to have some dinner here tonight. We'll have a look at the menu and all the amenities that you can see down here a bit after we leave. But as you can see, the deluxe sleeper is uh, pretty spacious. There's a lot of real estate here for 200 euros. One thing we are definitely going to do is undo... Oh and do that window there because it is very warm in here I need to turn down the heating yes yeah, the heating is turned all the way up let's turn that down just a bit we leave exactly on time from amsterdam at 7 30 pm I've always found this quite cool. Deluxe sleeper passengers get a small bottle of white wine as a welcome gift. I think I'll take that home with me. Let's look at today's route. It's just over 1,200 kilometers, 747 miles by rail, and it'll take us 13 hours and 49 minutes, crossing three countries before we reach Vienna. Shortly after boarding, there's a ticket and ID check, and you're invited to hand in your breakfast order. You can select up to six items off this menu for no extra charge. There's also a hot food menu if you fancy, although getting an early dinner in Amsterdam before the train leaves is also a good idea. There is no dining car on board, which is the only real downside to this train. I do love a dining car, and eating in your own room is fine, but a bit less fun. All right, dinner time, and I've got one of the meal deals, the chicken and rice. Um, coming with the meal deal um, is this 500 ml can of beer. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the portion size. You know, we're on a train in the middle of Europe. Um, you are always gonna pay a premium for this stuff, and um, the portion size doesn't look too bad. The bed can be set up by the attendant and is about six feet long and very comfortable. You saw earlier when I talked about fares, you can get three people in here. The top and the middle bunks are folded away if you're on your own, as I am. Security is mostly pretty good on European trains, but you'll still be glad to know that the door can be locked, both from the inside and the outside, with one of these old-fashioned Ving keycards. There's a bin, each bunk has its own reading lamp, and of course, there's a full blackout blind, which is better than most hotel room curtains at keeping the sun away. 
This is a deluxe sleeper, which comes with an all-in-one shower and ensuite toilet. You just shift the basin to one side and here's your shower, which has surprisingly good pressure for a train. Toiletries are provided, but they're quite basic and it's always best to bring your own anyway. Towels are also provided. Finally, there's one power socket located down by the bed, which is fine if you're on your own and less ideal if there's more than one of you. As you can see, the amenity bag is well stocked. There's more than you could possibly need on a 14 hour journey in here. There's even a shoe shine mitt, and I love this funky eye mask. Here are the seats I told you about earlier. Now, these aren't too popular on many routes because they're no way to spend an overnight trip, but they're there if you need them. And I have traveled like this exactly once when I got stranded in Italy, so they are an important option to have on the train. The couchettes are quite busy tonight, so no chance of taking a peek, but here's a regular sleeper set up for two people, which you can see has no shower or toilet and instead has a basin behind this cupboard door. Sleeper passengers without a deluxe berth can use the communal toilets and shower instead at the end of the coach. So we're already in Germany, there's no border formality to complete here. We're in Europe, in the Schengen zone, all the borders just melt away and I missed it. There's no formal border crossing. All right, that's 11 p.m. We're on the move. Hopefully get a good six or seven hours of sleep on our way into Austria. Good night. This is Passau, the German-Austrian border town. We pass over the German-Austrian border about here, and we're all set to head straight to Vienna on time. So here we are, 14 hours, three countries. We're now in Vienna, Austria. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you take night jet? Would you take a sleeper train in Europe? Thanks so much for coming with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.